Hello and welcome back to the Ten Pine Podcast. We're here, me and Lucas Normal and Beefing. You all right, lads? And we have a very special guest, musician and co-producer of Have A Word, Finley K. How are we, mate? I'm good. Pleasure to be here. How are you guys? Good, thanks. Good. Nice one for coming, Zan. Oh, no worries. No worries. So we're best to get started with, you've got your first single coming out soon. Can you yeah. tell us a bit about yeah. that then? Yeah, it's kind of a fresh start. I've had some stuff out the past few years, but it's all kind of been self-produced at home, kind of everything's just yeah. done myself like on loops on like garage band and stuff but this time got into uh the motor museum studios um and kind of worked properly on it i'm really really pleased with how it sounds i'm looking forward to, to yeah, getting you it sent out it there. over before it's a, it's a step up in yeah, it it's kind of cool. like yeah yeah i'm really happy with it it sounds uh it sounds a lot more radio ready than any of the other stuff and yeah. a kind of fresh start new sound new influences that sort of thing Talking of influencers, like to, who are your influencers then? Uh, this, the, my 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 Spotify is like so eclectic. Like I will listen to anything, like funk and disco yeah. and but and pop. But I'd say kind of in terms of the writing, um, I love Blossoms, uh, Oasis, kind of indie, kind of British indie is is just the, my kind of go to if I'm ever like struggling of what to kind of think of what to listen to. I'll go back to like British indie kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's always our go to. You mentioned yeah. before we started, you went to see um, Liam Gallagher at Nevworth in the Etihad. Oh my, oh my, <laughs> yeah, highlight. We were talking about where you guys went as well. Like, it's just, it's so good. It was so nice. It felt, it felt like uh, history, didn't it? It, it, yeah, it, it, it kind of, it was nice. There was a lot less phones than I'm used to seeing at gigs at yeah. the minute. It was kind yeah. of people just chatting all day to each other, just being friendly and kind of making like those friends that you make for like half an hour and then you're off <laughs> yeah. to a different part. Yeah, it was so it was so good. I won't I won't be forgetting it. Yeah, what's your deck on this new album? I like it. It's 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 different, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of there's a few interesting tunes on there. The one with um the one that Vampire Weekend wrote with him is really, really good. Moscow rules. There's and then the opens with a children's choir. It's kind of yeah. it's different. Oh, it's very different for him, isn't yeah, it? The first yeah. time I listened to that, I heard the choir from more power. I'd probably <laughs> yeah. say that's my favourite song on that album, you know. It's grown on me massively. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's 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 different. He needed to do something different. If people yeah. do the same stuff over and over again, yeah. you kind of get it gets a bit stale. It'd so. be interesting to see what he does next. What can he do mm. next? After see, he's done Nebworth for two nights. We and you were talking about this, yeah. but we were saying like he's reached the pinnacle. He's going to do his beer now. Just take loads of coke and do something <laughs> absolutely mental. Uh, oh. I don't know. I don't see, know. I was saying, I seen someone tweet it like the only what step up really would be Wembley Stadium, won't it, London? I, I, I don't think that's a step it, up. Yeah. Yeah. No. no, it's it's getting the band back together is the next thing. Isn't it? But I don't think it'll ever happen. Me, me, you know? me either. Me I don't either. think it needs to happen. Yeah, no, I don't. I, no. What like I say? What's the point? Don't get no. me wrong. I'd love well, it. Well, I'm but... going to watch Noel on Saturday. Yeah, uh, he's playing down the road from my house in Colwyn Bay. Yeah, and it's like eight thousand people, and it's not sold out. It's, it's mad. So there's it's there's mad. kind of yeah. Yeah, well, I can remember before COVID, we were meant to see Noel at the um, was it the O2 Apollo in Manchester yeah. and it weren't mm. that big of a venue and it, yeah. that weren't sold out I can remember like waking up early to get tickets and the next yeah. day I checked and I was like he's, he's earned the right to do what he wants on it yeah. they're yeah, both, course, they're both yeah, doing yeah. their own thing I love them both who do you prefer? I can't pick it's like picking yeah. like, it's just I'd say Liam personally as a bloke uh, I'd rather she... go for a pint with Liam but then if you look on the past all the stuff questionable stuff Liam's done as well I think now Liam comes across as a lot more even it might just be marketable though. Yeah, yeah, oh. they, yeah. There's there's a lot of kind of he's in the marketing machine now. Yeah. He's he's yeah. rinsing the fans a little bit, just a yeah. little bit with the amount of vinyl and stuff they're putting out. Yeah, I I, I love them both. But see, the other week I went on holiday and I read Tony McCarroll's book. Yeah, who's the original drummer for Oasis, and Noel Gallagher does not come across well in that. Yeah, I've read but a lot of stuff. Of, it's, he's, he's ruthless, wasn't he? But yeah. it's, it worked. They, yeah, you've got people. You you guys have met a lot of kind of industry people and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. The ruthless people get to the top eventually. They kind of if they work hard and they know what they want, they kind of yeah. it works out. Yeah. So do you know, going back to you, um, do you know your song? What are the lyrics about in it and that? Then so where's the so it's, from? I kind of wrote it. I wrote it. Um, at, towards the end of last year it was kind of um kind of a period of kind of just feeling a bit a bit a bit indifferent to what i was doing kind of worrying where i was going like what i was what i was what the next year was going to hold so it's kind of about like just figuring stuff out and kind of trying to make the most of your time and kind of working towards something um but yeah it's kind of I hope it's relatable to people. Like that's yeah. that's the aim with all music, and it's trying yeah. to kind of relate to people and. 
get that kind of uh, empathy across. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of about just making the most of your time and knowing what you want, kind of thing. Have you played any gigs yet? Yeah. So I do. I don't do. I don't do that ma- that many original gigs where I'm where I'm based at the minute in North Wales. The the original scene isn't isn't the best and kind of at the minute I've not got a band behind me so it's just me and an acoustic guitar so when I when I get the chance I will do them but at the minute it's mainly the the covers gigs but I'm trying yeah. to kind of phase them out slowly and kind of work on my own stuff a lot more is that the aim to be in a band then eventually yeah yeah to either be in a band or to kind of be have, have a, a band yeah. behind me yeah yeah definitely just to give that kind of fuller sound um and kind of make it a lot more like the recordings because when I play on the acoustic, it doesn't quite sound like the recording. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously you've um, recorded the song before, Laura's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did that come about then? That was a joke that got out of hand, <laughs> yeah. essentially, yeah. I literally was having writer's block at home. I was just playing G and C on the guitar and that kind of chorus... Which is it's catchy. It's annoying. Yeah. It's annoying how catchy it is. I, I wish I'd used it. I'll find me some home, home in it. Just not I know. <laughs> I wish I'd saved it for another song, but too late. Uh, I just sent I sent the the chorus and the first verse into the group ch- the work group chat just to hopefully make them laugh. I was new there. I was still trying to get my feet under the table yeah. Yeah. and kind of trying to impress them. And they were just like, "Oh my god, we love that! Like, get that on Patreon." And then it was at the. Um, the the live show we did last august i played it at the end and it went so well and then one of the comics said to me he was like you should go for a christmas song you know you should do that you should yeah, record yeah. it properly and then uh yeah one thing led to another and it's getting played at anfield it was so such <laughs> a surreal Where couple did we of get months quite high in the charts so in the in like capitals charts and like gl- global radios charts it got to number yeah. 23 that's mad. 23 is my lucky number so that was <laughs> mental yeah. that was mad and then um in the actual charts i was like it, it was so crazy that week we got in the first few days we were in the top like few on itunes and it was kind of we were going oh my god is this is this happening like yeah. I, in my head i'm like oh i'm getting a record deal i'm leaving the pot screw <laughs> them guys like I'm, I'm ready to be a star but then um it kind of came crashing back to reality when it didn't it didn't make the top 40 but we sold the fourth most that week so it was only elton john and then um cunt and the gang who <laughs> did did the did the um sausage rolls song like the joke song yeah um they they got the top two um so and we had raised a lot of money for charity which was which was great and it was a full-on roller coaster and it was such a a crazy few weeks it was it was brilliant i wouldn't i don't regret any of it do you think working like i have a word helps you with like music like have you learned a lot from obviously that was a bit of a joke song but yeah have you learned a lot from that i definitely learned that the stuff i was doing was not kind of up to scratch and I, it kind of made me think, okay, I need to take this a bit more seriously and kind of put put the effort and put the money in because to get a good producer and to get into a good studio, you have got to spend the money. Yeah. Um, and in terms of like working with Have A Word, the, the exposure I've got is definitely better. When I joined, I was on like 200 Twitter followers. I was I was just a lad yeah. that in uni, I, was, I wasn't doing anything. So it's definitely helped in terms of people asking me about music and kind of... Yeah people will come to my covers gigs and stuff and come and say hello that sort of thing um but so yeah i'd say it, w- it has helped overall yeah i'm telling you what though you know, the actual production of that law is gone. gone it's yeah, it's, it's world class yeah, isn't so, it so <laughs> i worked with the same guy on the new single he's yeah. called bob he's he's since left the motor museum he's been poached by peter gabriel so he's now working yeah. at peter gabriel hell? studio nice. yeah but he's he was he's an absolute wizard and he's such he's such a nice guy um and yet he's kind of he realized the ideas i'd made the demo for laura's gone i made the demo for the new song and he kind of polished them off and came up with some new ideas and kind of it was a real collaboration in the studio um but yeah the production's great isn't it it's 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 it was crazy from from what it started as the kind of the idea to the finished product was was a complete whole new a whole different world (laughs) where do you see yourself like like what's the the eventual goal with the music like what what's your dream gig oh dream gig i lo- i love the albert hall in manchester yeah. I, li- I went to uni in manchester um 
and that was that's kind of my favorite venue to go to i'd love to play there uh, i'd love i'd love to be just just to be able to do music as a career yeah. and kind of to to have that as your job because then it's it's not work like, yeah yeah i'll do my gigs at the weekend and i'm i'm like i would do this for free you're paying me but i would do this for free yeah um that's that's the dream definitely is to just do it full time i've said to the lads at, at have a word i've said like i would still want to come in and just sit on the podcast records because it's so fun yeah. like sure you guys like love doing this like yeah it's, it's just fun in it, it yeah, you just yeah. get to chat with your mates and kind of meet interesting people so yeah doing the doing the two alongside each other's the, the dream so yeah. how, how did it come about with have a word then i was a fan i was a fan yeah. initially yeah i was i was a fan of initially adams i went to see adam at the comedy store in manchester when i was a student and i was like who's this 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 guy's great i loved stand up i love comedy comedy and music was the two things i'd go yeah. to in uni and i was like who's this guy and i followed him for a bit watching like on red men tv and stuff and that sort of thing and then when have a word started i listened to it and then it got to i finished my uni course and i kind of was like oh god i'm not getting a job here yeah. it was in covid it was it was at the, the height of the lockdowns i was getting rejected by like poundland and stuff like <laughs> i was scraping the bottom of the barrel yeah and then it just kind of the stars aligned like as cheesy as it is like the job came at the exact right time and i was lucky there was like 800 applicants and i just managed to do well in my interview yeah I and who interviewed you? Was it Adam and Dan? Yeah, I got, <laughs> to, I got to sit on the couch. Mind, no. I got to sit on the couch and I and I was in the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, in, we're in the studio and I literally came away from it going, if I don't get the job, I've got to go and sit on my favorite, like my favorite podcast. I've got to yeah. sit on the couch. I've done well. I came away going, I think I've done well there. That I got on with them. <laughs> Um, did they ask like the proper like I they were imagine. serious they were dead serious, serious. Yeah. yeah it was it was really weird. I can't imagine them like you <laughs> like can't, that I can't oh yeah it was it was it was really surreal but <laughs> it was kind of yeah the stars aligned and it was it came at the exact right time I I, I kind of put everything I had in to have a word and I think that's kind of paying off slowly yeah, yeah. initially it was kind of up in the air because it was just an internship but now it's kind of full time and it's it's going really well so do you know like your first few weeks there were you like starstruck and that like working with adam and my first day my first day was stephen tries was was in yeah. and i liked stephen tries and yeah he went, he went to my uni and he was kind of people would be like going oh my god i saw stephen tries on campus yeah. today <laughs> and stuff like that and it got to the end of the day and they were like Fim, you're living. You're in Salford. Do you want to take him back? And I had a high and die gets from two thousand and one. <laughs> it was a tiny, horrible car that barely worked. Um, and I was going. I was going back to North Wales, and I was so scared. I didn't tell them. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll give him a lift. So I went to Manchester to drive back to Liverpool. <laughs> uh, drive, drive back to North Wales. Gave him a lift. It was. Was it like it being in the car just with him? That's what I was supposed to. We chatted. We just chatted about like line of duty and stuff. It was really weird. <laughs> I was like, "What is going on here? This is. This, it's my first day on the of a trial. It wasn't even a prop. I hadn't even started. Then it was a trial shift. So it was the first day. It was so surreal. And then it just kept getting weirder and weirder and kind of. Yeah. yeah we we have all sorts of people in. Who's but, the guest that you've been most starstruck by? Um, I think it was probably Jimmy Carr. Yeah, I can. I, can I think. Imagine like being british he's been everywhere for he's mainstream celebrity he's, yeah he's, he's, he's name, prime he? time in it he's yeah. he's on everything that you can think of he's on all the chat shows eight out of ten cats i love the eight out of ten cats eight out of ten cats does count now he does all the kind of shows that you just even if you're not a big fan of his you know you know his work and you've yeah. seen him and he's just like part of the british furniture so when he came in it was kind of a bit like oh wow well it's a it's a proper yeah it's a proper celebrity the rest of it i kind of i feel quite they're people yeah celebrities yeah. are people like if you treat them like something else then you're gonna come across like a bit of a knob yeah so yeah. i kind of just chat to them about normal stuff like ramesh ranganathan was in last week and yeah. we were just chatting about football and stuff like that it's just <laughs> it's just normal you just you just yeah i'm quite good i'm quite good at being professional and not yeah not being starstruck there are obviously exceptions to that where i think not that this is gonna happen but if paul mccartney came on yeah. i think i'd just sit there just maybe cry in <laughs> i don't know but who would yeah. who would be your like dream guest to like come in 
I've always, I've always had a, so my, my mates have like asked me like, who would you be starstruck by? I've always had a list of like a few. So it's, we mentioned before, Liam and Noel. Yeah. I'd be yeah. really starstruck. Paul McCartney. And then it's people like Steve Carell. I love The Office and I watch The Office all, all the time. So I think if Steve Carell come on, it'd be amazing. Jurgen yeah. Klopp. But I don't know if I'd be starstruck or whether I just want to give him a hug. Yeah. I'm not sure. But I wouldn't let him on here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, you're blue. Yeah. yeah both both of us are. <laughs> oh, right, right, okay. I'd, I'd have him on for the views. Maybe. Yeah, yeah you'd, you'd, you'd get it. You'd, you'd get the views of that. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then I don't know, I like maybe someone like David Tennant. I used to, I watched his Doctor Who when he was Doctor Who, like just all the time and that sort yeah. of thing. But yeah, there's only a few that I think I'd be weird about. Everyone else is they're just, they're just people. You just... You just chat to them, don't People you? People say when you meet like a celebrity, sometimes you get let down. You don't have to name anyone, but has there been anyone where you thought they're not what I expected? Um, no, I don't. I don't think so. Particularly, I think I think Adam and Dan are really good at kind of picking people that they either know and like like yeah. or kind of think they'd get on with. And there's there's obviously the odd guest where it's like that wasn't our best episode, but there's no one that's ever been nasty or anything. Everyone's always pleasant and and nice and and chatty and kind of stuff because i was the person that would always have to like if they were getting if they were getting to the train station i'd go and pick them up so yeah I, i'd yeah. be like a taxi driver and be like oh how, how was the journey like that sort of yeah. stuff yeah people people are just they're, they're sound most yeah. people are sound aren't they in, in life in general there's obviously the odd, odd exception but i think we're, we're kind of lucky in, in getting good people on. Yeah, the platform which that's gave some people other words as boss, but you want to know one of my favourites is who's been on that, that Jamie Hutchinson. Uh, he yeah. cracks me up. You know what today? Yeah, yeah he, was, he was back on this week. Oh, he told some, some, yeah, some so great funny. stories again. Yeah, he, so uh, he's one I picked up from the station and he was, he was saying to me, he was like, I'm dead nervous. He was like, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be good on this. And I was like, mate, don't worry about it. Just chill out. You've got this. And then, Dr. Catford and all that, that oh. episode has gone down as like one of our, our most famous. I I think he could tell you anything and it'll just, it's somehow make you funny. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's, I, I love Jamie. He's so, he's so funny. And he's also, I've never seen anyone get as drunk as him. It's impressive. <laughs> it's impressive the amount he can put away. Yeah. yeah Where did that guy. idea of like, like the lockdown lock-ins and stuff, where does it like come from? Because a lot of the ideas we've never seen before on any other podcasts. So the lock-ins, the first lock-in was like my my first day. I think the the day after they were recording the lock-in and they were just kind of, there was no other, they couldn't do the specials that we're able to do now because we couldn't go anywhere. And then the first one was a success. So then it's just kind of built from there. Just And it seems to be that everyone's taking it in turns to get the most drunk. <laughs> I've, I've not been the one yet. I'm worried yeah. about when the next one is, if I'm going to have to be the one that's getting absolutely smashed. But... Yeah, it's, it's just great. And it's kind of, I think it's the kind of thing of just, you see that it's just a few people in a room that are just mates, just chatting yeah, yeah. and it feels relatable. And it's not kind of a performance or a show. It's just us chatting and getting drunk and it's not faked. They're hammered. Yeah. Like when when they drink, they drink. They yeah, I think, I think it'll be hard for anyone to ever get as drunk on it as Dan did <laughs> on the last um, vlog in which he's done. Oh, that, yeah, but there was there was one, I, the one that springs to mind for me is Max. Oh, Stephen yeah. tries. <laughs> and he nearly snaps oh, the mic. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, the behind the scenes of that was even worse. Like, the, on, the, on camera, he looked pretty presentable. But afterwards, geez, there was a really funny picture of him. The taxi driver that took him home took a picture of him because he was on his knees in a field. He just said, I need to get out. And he was just on his knees in the field, topless. He was, I've, I've only met him like once. That was it. That's the only time I've met him. And he was blackout drunk. What, what how did you find like the um, haunts as um... The ghost hunts. Yeah. The ghost hunts were a load of fun. Like the one, the one we did first, it was light outside and it was summer and it was just a nice day. Yeah. We, I just had a nice time. It wasn't scary. I don't believe in that sort of the, the paranormal side of things. But, um, yeah, it, it was just fun. And then the castle one was such a laugh. It was just going away with your mates for a night, staying in, like, a, a big castle that people would pay loads to rent that out. And, and then Barry Dodds had sorted at us, so we just drove down there. Um, I didn't, I wasn't particularly scared, but it was just such, such a laugh. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to do any more. Yeah. Just because, th how do you top that last one? How do you even think of that idea? The ghost hunts. I think it was mainly through Barry. 
so Barry, who showed us round, is massively into his ghosts, and they've got he's got a film out from his podcast, The Parapod. Um, the film's great, by the way. If anyone's not watched it, it's it's brilliant. Um, so he's really into it, and watching him freak out about the tiniest noises and stuff like that is is so entertaining and so fun to to be around. So, uh, but I hope we do another one. But yeah. I don't know whether I, d- I don't think I could ever go on a ghost hunt or not. I'm no, like I could have messed with it, me. What 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 about if you're on a council estate in the northeast? It's not that scary. <laughs> like like when, you, when it's light outside and there's yeah. kids playing and you can hear them. When you're in the house and you're on, you can just hear kids playing. It's yeah. not that scary. What's the secret to like the? Is it the biggest Patreon in the UK? Or the, is it in the world? I don't. It's not the biggest in the world. I don't know if it's the biggest. I I don't think it's the biggest in the UK. It's what it's like in. We're in the top thirty five yeah. in the world. So it is. It's. But what, it's, what's the secret to that? Is it marketing? Is it just because it's funny? Or is it like there's a lot more hard work going to them what people So it, I think a big part of it is consistency and kind of we never miss an episode. We don't miss it's always two episodes a week, a special a month, and then added bonus bits occasionally. Stuff yeah. like that. So it's kind of that and it's also just like people find it at different times and if you find something you love, you kind of you stick with it and there's there's the amount of content. People people come up to all of us. I know I I've I can only speak for myself, but people come up and they're chatting to you and they, they're chatting to you like you're their mate and that you yeah, yeah. You, you feel like you know us and it's great. Like it's that's what you want from that sort of thing. I know podcast I used to listen to and stuff like that. You feel like you're their mate and you feel like you could go and chat to them about yeah. whatever. Um so I think that's that's part of it. And then it's 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 also just Adam, Carl and Dan are just super, super talented. Like Adam and Dan are so so funny, and then Carl isn't a comedian, but yeah. is is also. I hope he's not watching this because his head's already big enough. But <laughs> he's so funny, and it's it's so it's the same off off mic and off yeah. camera when we stop recording. It's exactly the same. Yeah. Talking of Carl, anyway, that brings us on nicely. He put a question box up the other day, so I asked him, "What what should we ask Finn?" And he said to mention the Aldi Middle Isle incident. For fuck's sake. Okay, <laughs> right. I'm not sure how to talk about this without embarrassing myself. Okay, <laughs> basically, the long story short is that uh, I shit myself in an Aldi <laughs> and put my kecks in the middle aisle, like in the middle, do you know, the bits that, <laughs> like, the bits that are like kind of, do you know, like the random yeah. bits of stuff. I just put my pants like at the bottom of them. How did you take them off? Though? I went to the toilet. Oh, I was going to say, I in the middle of the aisle. Because I had to get home. So I what kex did you panicked. put on them? Huh? No, I just went commando. Oh, I thought you went your took. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, my actual <laughs> bad, just walking around with the bollocks out. But, yeah, no. I feel like we need more context <laughs> to that story, you know? Like, you don't, you don't. You don't need any more. That's all you're getting. Was, you, Ka- was Carl here with you? No, no. How did you get home in the end, then? I got a taxi, that's why I had to chuck my kex. I oh. just didn't want to get in the taxi with Dickens someone's farm though. Uh probably some poor poor oh. Aldi worker. Oh, <laughs> I'm joking by the way, that was a load of bollocks. Oh, <laughs> oh that was <laughs> yeah. oh, you had <laughs> I texted him last night when you sent me the, the thing over, I was like, What am I telling him? Because I saw I saw that he'd sent it and he was like, That's up to you. He was like, I'm out of this, this isn't me. Oh, what, so he just made that up? Yeah, yeah. How's he just made it up? What do you mean? <laughs> How just in on that? No, I know. I, w- I wasn't. I just saw that you guys had asked him. <laughs> so I saw that and I was like, they won't ask it. They'll have forgotten about that by next week. <laughs> uh, do you have any embarrassing stories about Carl? About oh, Carl? <laughs> nah, Carl. I've never seen Carl drunk. Like, actually drunk on a yeah. night out. The other two, I've seen them in some states and it's funny. But Carl's kind of quite measured. And from what Adam and Dan and Steve have said, they say like Carl gets drunk like three times a year and that's it. And you've just got to catch him on it. And I've just yeah. not been out of him yet. So he's like, he's the straight man of the group. Like me and him on the nights out are like PR men, like checking where are Adam and Dan, are they embarrassing themselves? What are they doing? <laughs> like watching them. Um, but yeah, no, Carl, Carl doesn't, doesn't embarrass himself. It's annoying. Yeah. I wish he did. Do Adam and Dan. <laughs> yeah. Do yeah. Any stories about them? Um, I'm trying to think of ones that are all right for this. Um, oh, I don't know. I can't think of any off the top of my head. 
I'll, I'll have a think. Come back to me on that. Oh. I'll have a think. What What's the most annoying Javi anyone has a have a word? So, the, do you know the two seconds thing? The two seconds, two seconds Adam on his phone. Oh, yeah. That's real. That is, he's, he's bad for being on his phone. Um, Dan. Uh, no, Dan's not got any really annoying habits. And Carl. I'm trying to think. No, no, I just get on with them. They're all just dead sound. It's annoying. I'm sure it's annoying for people to think like, surely there's something wrong with everyone. But everyone, everyone's just dead sound. We all get on. Like, there's never any rows or anything. It's always just, it's like, it's like happy families. Like a a week after this podcast, have a word. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. I'm disgraced. Yeah. Where's the the idea of like you and and Carl speaking? Like on the podcast, you don't really get most like producers really yeah. doing that as well. I think I think Carl Carl kind of because when I joined, Carl didn't speak that much. Like he had a mic, yeah. but he was kind of it was like Joe Rogan, you know, like Jamie Google yeah, and yeah. stuff, and it was kind of that sort of thing. And then it kind of evolved, and Carl kind of grew in confidence. I think I don't watch the old episodes back, but I'm sure if you watch it back, you can see an evolution of Carl kind of chipping in more and coming up with more jokes and stuff and then with me it's kind of it started off with like the bleak stories of real like <laughs> that was how it started with that yeah. and then it's just kind of evolved like if they just need another voice on it or something like that and it's a running joke in it i don't have a mic that's it's, that's <laughs> funny i don't have as much funny stuff to step to say as them um so one thing i can't get over yeah the fact that is your dad's take is usually yeah. And your mum's Welsh. That's, Why is that mad? It's a bad combination. That's just my <laughs> life. That's just, I'm used to that. I don't think that's that weird. No, but, Have you been to Turkey? No. Have you seen, no, okay. So I think it's quite common in Turkey, do you know, like in like the holiday like resorts and like the places where there's nightclubs is that young Turkish men would love a English life or like a yeah. British yeah. life. So they're like trying to work their way into the like holiday makers yeah i think that's just what happened with my mum and dad i've yeah. not really questioned it like yeah that's just the way it happened no but it's like i, I always I, what i always what i thought about when the first day is that you've never heard of a footballer saying do you only have to choose like the nationality yeah like choosing between wales or turkey what football like yeah it's i i it's kind of i was the exotic one in my school like that says a lot about North Wales. Like I was kind of the one where people go, "Oh, he's a bit like he's foreign in." Like, like, kind of, yeah. Like, yeah. And I was born and raised in in Wales. Um, it's it's just yeah. I'm very proud of the Turkish side of me. Like yeah. I'm, go, I'm going there next month to to see that side of the family and that. I'm I'm very I wear it on my sleeve and kind of I would always say I would. Is there any like it. particular foods which you like from Turkey? Oh, so I'm a veggie now. Yeah, but, but before that, an Eskender kebab from this one specific kebab shop in my hometown. Oh, I thought you were gonna say in like Istanbul or something. <laughs> Not in no, in my hometown. No, hometown. Oh, I think it was in like, Real as a no, kebab like my, shop. My, like my dad's, where where all my dad's family are and where yeah. my dad is the, in Turga Trees, which is near Bodrum. There's a kebab shop that does an Eskender kebab. They don't do Eskender kebabs here. Yeah. It's like, it's like the, it's like. Donna meat's crap in it, like it's horrible. But yeah, it's also it's great. nice at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's like fine bits of meat cut up like Donna meat with like a tomatoy, garlicky sauce, and like some yogurt, um, and then like bits of pita bread. Oh, it's amazing. I am worried about going there. And like, that will be my biggest test of being a veggie so far is yeah. whether I can hack looking at a kebab like a turkish kebab and being like no nah, i'm good i'm good uh, what made you become a lame veggie oh it's funny uh, it's funny i've told this on um mild high club so i had it's like it's coming up to a year it's like just under a year since it happened but basically i had an, an edible that was far too strong and i was not in a good way so um i decided to order a kebab to try and sober myself up <laughs> I got, the kebab came, it was a chicken donna one, and I looked at it, and the plate like was like moving, and I was like, how many chickens is this? Like, because you don't, do you know what I mean? Don, <laughs> donna meat is just like all the crap in it, so it, yeah. it, it could have been two chickens on that plate, it could have been 6,000, I don't actually know, <laughs> not touched meat since then. It That's was crazy. Mad. I know, I'm not touching edibles again either, that scared me, <laughs> scared me for life. God knows what would happen if I had another one. Yeah, it <laughs> was, yeah, it was, it was, 
it was a weird <laughs> one. It was a real weird one. I wasn't one. expecting that answer there. Yeah, I, I, was I like, know. Most people are like, oh, I watched a documentary about a Peter documentary and they can't take the cruelty. No, I, just, one, I, was I just went too far. Like the... I just went well too far on, on it. I've heard you say on our way, I well need to ask about this. Do you know, like your weed and stuff like yeah. that? And Edwards, don't you get that off the dark web? Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I, and, I, and then, so I did talk about this on Have a Word, and then I watched the episode back, and that was the only time I said to the lads, can we cut that? And they were like, no. <laughs> was like, oh, no, yourself. just, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't do it so much anymore, but yeah, there's, you can get anything on the internet, can't you? That's just, the internet is great and awful yeah. in equal amounts. Um, yeah, not, not so much anymore, but you can order stuff. I wouldn't even know how to get onto that. I didn't. It was some lad in uni showed me, and it was just it was, it was it was, I was it was just easier than going to meet people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, let's say, um, have a word, like kicked you off, and then you got the option to join any podcast, any podcast as the producer, and like talking that. Oh, what podcast so, would it be? So there's a podcast that I've loved for years. That's too comedic. It's not that dissimilar from Have a Word. It's a lot cleaner because it's on the BBC now. Yeah, yeah. but it's two comedians called uh you might know him if you know like footy he's, he, one of them's called ellis james he's a welsh um comedian who's a massive football fan and he's like the go-to welsh football fan like yeah. whenever wales do well or anything they go to him and then his partner john robbins um and they've got a show on five live yeah. and their producer chats on it a lot and he's great dave and i love that podcast that's the since I since I joined Have a Word, I listen to podcasts loads less. Yeah, I don't know if you guys are the same. Like, it's kind of like a busman's holiday. Like, you work on them, so I don't. I think we I, still look at them and it for like just to take things from. Yeah, them. yeah. Whereas I, I, Have a Word is like at the top, so it's probably it's probably hard for you to, especially being a producer, watching on the podcast. You may think, oh, they could have done a lot better. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 not. I never really watched podcasts either. The only one I ever watched was Have a Word, to be honest, and then like Joe Rogan clips and stuff. Yeah. But in terms of listening, it's kind of yeah. I don't. I don't because it's work now. I kind of like to switch off from that, and I love yeah. listening to music on drives and stuff. But that is that one is like the only podcast I'll listen to. The Alice and John. Yeah. On Five Live. Yeah, yeah. Just just going back to the start with your music, and I went completely off topic here. Yeah, but when did your first time start playing guitar? I started playing guitar when I was like uh, 15, 16, yeah. like the, the end of high school. Like I stopped. So I was, I was always singing like from when I was little, like my, mm. but no one else is particularly musical in my family. No one else yeah. really plays an instrument or anything. So it was kind of, I was, it was just, must've been intrinsic. It must've just been in me. Um, and I am in high school, just kind of in the way that you are in high school, lads were like, yeah, singing's like, you know, it's not yeah. cool, is it? Like, yeah. So I stopped for a few years, and then at fifteen, I was like, "Hmm, what the girls like?" And then <laughs> in my head, I thought girls liked people playing the guitar, so I picked up the guitar and started singing again. Um, and then it's just kind of it went from there. I did, I did, I played at like our our prom at the end of at the end of high school, and that kind of went well. And from there, I just gigged from there. Yeah. So since I was like sixteen, so it's like seven years now. I've not got any better at guitar. I'm the exact same level. I got to one point where I can play chords and I can kind of play along with myself and that's the level I was happy with. I've just kind of stuck so I think you just don't notice yourself improving though. But say if I'm like, sure it must be that a little yeah. bit, but in terms of like, I don't play any lead guitar. I, my writing's got loads better. Like I listened back to the songs that I wrote when I was 16, all about like girl, girls that I liked at the time. And I'm just <laughs> like, oh God, this is awful. So my writing's definitely got better. And, I'm sh and my voice has got better because at 16, I decided I wanted to sound like James Blunt. So I was putting on like a horrible, <laughs> horrible voice. Like I can't listen to the the videos back anymore from, from back then. Um, but yeah, it's, I need to, get, I, I, w I want to get better at guitar and I'm sure I'll find the time at some point. Can you remember the first song you learned? Um, yes. Yeah. And it was four chords and it had just come out at the time. Do you remember Counting Stars? By One Republic. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 So it's like a catchy like pop song. Yeah, it's four <laughs> chords. And I remember learning that and like going in and show my mum was like, "Look at this." She was like, like, "Yeah, brilliant. Well done. Well done. Go on, <laughs> off you go. Back in the other room." <laughs> um, yeah, that was the first one I learned properly. And then obviously like everyone learns like Seven Nation Army, like the little riff for that yeah. and Smoke on the Water and stuff like that. 
did you have, like watch YouTube videos to learn, or was it just like core books? So I had, so in in my high school, you, if you did GCSE music, you got lessons for cheap. Like yeah. It was like a quid for a lesson. Sound, huh? Yeah, yeah. It was really like subsidised by the Welsh government, which is great. Labour in it, you know. <laughs> um, so I did, I did like a few guitar lessons. I did like a term worth just so I could get the very basics right. And then I kind of taught myself from there. Um, and then it was just kind of a case of just practising, not like learning, but like looking at chords and kind of getting quicker with moving and stuff like that and it just kind of naturally yeah. evolved just the more you do something in it but you like writing your songs like is there any certain like do you always do the same process or does it just sort of come to you like how do you write a song it's it's weird that and I've, I've been asked that a few times and it's kind of I feel like un unless you write songs you literally don't get it it's, it's like a lot of things like Unless you see how the sausage is made, you just don't understand it. Um, <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> how, how the sausage gets made? Is that like is that like that's a North Wales? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 that's just a phrase. Like, if you, have you ever heard that? <laughs> no, it's like if you if you how you break. Do you know how you break something down? Yeah, that's like how the sausage gets made. <laughs> no, okay. It's kind of it's different. Sometimes it'll be a chord. Sometimes I'll have an idea for a lyric in my head. Sometimes I'll have a little melody stuff like that. The best ones I tend to find though are when you're not trying to write a song. When yeah. you try too hard, I always end up doing my worst stuff. It's when you sit down and you're just playing and it just comes to you in, in one go. Like there's a few songs that I've written. So I'd say there's like, I'd say I've got like 50, 50 songs that I'm, I'd be happy to play is like that. I've yeah. Written. yeah. And out of them, maybe like 10 of them, they come to you in one go. It's like the whole song just fo falls out like the sky and you just you just write it it's like you don't write it there's a so uh joe across the universe by the beatles yeah yeah john lennon always says he didn't write that song he said he just woke up and that song was already written and he just had to go and get it out into the world so it's kind of those songs are the are the best ones where you'd feel like you're not writing it it feels like it kind of writes itself. I think Noel Gallagher said that the yeah. you're already in the air. It's the fish. Yeah, the fish. I didn't want to go like back that. to Oasis again, but yeah, <laughs> the fishing thing when you're going out, yeah. and you're just going to catch the song. Yeah, it's that. It's that. I I fully believe in that. I've read, I've read a bit of a book um, about songwriting that's that's really interesting. Different people's methods on it, but a lot of people say like the best ones are the ones that you're not trying. You just it just happens. That's so hard to like measure though isn't it like like you could say why the beatles so good because oh he's woke up and he, he knows the song on his head yeah like that could happen to you tomorrow morning doubt it like you'd be screwed then you could have this whole song in your head and you just can't get it out yeah it's it's it is it is mad it's kind of it's it's a form of magic like it's the nearest thing yeah i'd see to magic in that it's it's creating anything though isn't it it's like a drawing yeah or like a film or something you start with nothing and you come out with something that you can look back on forever and you, yeah you made that in that space of time so do you know your um latest single what mm. date does that um come out that's uh, coming out on july the first july yeah, the first july the first i don't think so, we've actually mentioned the name you know oh right yeah that's <laughs> a good point yeah it's good publicity um it's called i think i do yeah yeah um july the first i'm currently getting the videos getting sorted ish um, it's just a lyric video because I don't like appearing in it. So it's just a lyric yeah. video for, for now, but it's a bit trippy and that sort of thing. Um, I think it goes with the song really well. And it's just kind of a case of trying to get people to listen to it and kind of hope for a bit of radio play. But it's just, I'm not expecting the world for, for now, but just as many people as I can to get their ears yeah. around it. So share it and kind of word of mouth so important now and social yeah. media, that sort of thing. Have you showed many people the song like uh, like your mum and dad and then like Adam and Dan and Carl? Yeah, so I've, I've I did show I showed a few people. Um, I'd say it's only like fifteen people that have heard it. Though. Well, of all they had to say about it so far. Uh, so I'd, so I sent it into the the Have a Word group chat a few months ago, and um, Carl Carl replied with something like oh my god that's actually really good and i was like <laughs> right okay is that a backhanded compliment <laughs> like, what are you expecting like um but yeah they were they were well supportive about it and they said they said it was great and then 
the people around me have all said it's it's so far it's it's the best thing I've worked on, which is really nice to get that feedback. Yeah. Um, I'm happy with it. I can still listen to it and not hate it, which is a good sign. Um, I'm just looking forward to to for people to hear it. I'm hoping that people will add it to their playlists and kind of. What genre would you say it was? Because you sent it over for and yeah, I it's, it's a bit weird, synth, isn't it? Like yeah, synth indie synth pop. Yeah, is my kind of guess. I'd say for fans of like. Tame and Parlor, but I, not so Tame and Parlor. So when you said that before, when you said Blossoms and Tame yeah. and Parlor, I was like, I will take that. They're in two the of my favourite bands. Two. I love them. Blossoms was definitely a massive influence going into the studio. Yeah. And kind of, um, they're, they're someone that I think of making really good music at the minute and the music I love. Um, so yeah, any comparison to them is great. I think it sounds like me at the minute, which is good. I've not found that my sound yet i'm still yeah. i'm still relatively young though i'm still figuring out what kind of my sound is um so yeah any any comparison to them is great but hopefully when people listen to it they'll be like oh i can hear like you said a couple yeah. of bands i can hear a bit of someone else in it but hopefully that together makes a finley k song yeah. if that doesn't sound too cliche yeah just mentioning blossoms there what do you reckon their best album is Foolish Loving Spaces. Do you reckon? What do you reckon? I think I you've think. said Foolish Loving Spaces to me before. Yeah, you? probably. I think, I, I think that's partly. I think a lot of time, a lot of the time, music is dependent on the time of your life. Yeah, yeah what, that's what good it shelter. is. So, Foolish Loving Spaces came out just before lockdown, mm. and I absolutely rinse that album day in day out. I know it back to front, that sort of thing. Whereas my brother followed Blossoms a lot earlier than I did. He saw them when they were playing like two hundred people and that sort of thing yeah. so he loves the first album so i think it's all just a case of where you're at in your life but i've seen them recently and they've taken another step up in terms of tom as a front man and the band as, as a whole they've added a couple of people to kind of yeah. thicken out the sound yeah i've seen good. them on neighborhood a few weeks ago and i thought they were boss that was the first time i've seen them you've yeah. seen them about a hundred times haven't you i think i think it's about eight eight yeah, <laughs> yeah, i think, I've, I've, seen, I think I've seen them four or five times and yeah. they each time they just keep getting better well, i've seen something on tiktok the other the other day which blossoms put up in this bar like do you know the transition from song to song the second song. i saw that yeah, and yeah. i was just like that's like uh, that's so boss it's just a little thing isn't it you like yeah. you wouldn't even notice that unless you were like really looking for it it's just that kind of thing to make the gigs flow yeah. a bit smoother it does make a difference though yeah, yeah I, that, I noticed it myself when I see you know it's yeah. like that's really like yeah I, I think their whole like you know, their gig and the show they put behind it whether yeah. it be like the lights or the transitions I think they're still very very good at it do you know I, what I mean I love Blossoms yeah you seem sound as well have you seen the documentary yeah yeah. they, yeah, they, 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 they just, just seem like normal guys don't they yeah. they've worked hard and, yeah. and made it which is the dream for anyone that's in that kind of position yeah. at the bottom at the minute um yeah it's nice to know that if you work hard and you've got the good tunes it is possible so it's just yeah. kind of a case of working hard yeah definitely i'll probably say my favorite album of theirs is cool like you you know but i, I think i think they're all great yeah. and they've all got different tunes on them i think my favorite songs i think is probably there's a reason why and that's off that album so yeah, it's yeah, kind of true. there's there's different things and they've changed their sound slightly on each album yeah. which is which is great yeah so i'm just looking forward to what they're going to do next yeah. is there any bands like where like in north wales where you're from that you think that they're going to make it type thing at the moment um i don't know so the last ones that came from north wales were catfish yeah and that was a few years before me but i remember when i first started out people were like oh catfish were a couple of years ago like they were they were the band yeah, yeah. And they've they they've done so well. Oh, you just just split up, haven't they? Recently, it's, actually. it's up in the air, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's up in the air. Yeah. Um. So, um, the the, the band I I've liked at the minute is a there's a guy I know called Kyle Parry. Who his band the Montagues make really good indie music. That's just yeah. it sounds like Catfish. It sounds like Stereophonics. It sounds like British indie music. They're great. I I um if they I'd love for them to make it because they I've met. I think I've met all of them. They're all really sound guys, um, but there's not. I don't know. There's not. Uh, there's not that much. We interviewed a band of. called the Royston Club. Yeah, I think they're from North them. Wales. I've heard of them. I yeah. don't know. I've not. I don't know if they're from North. Maybe they are. I've, I've not come. I've not. They're definitely, they're definitely Wales. Welsh. Welsh. Don't know what part. And they're oh, right. from yeah. Wrexham. Oh, yeah. I remember these. Right, okay, so that's a bit. They'd probably be playing like Chester and Manchester that way. They wouldn't come the other way because yeah. yeah. the music scene's not amazing. Um, I think that's partly due to COVID and partly just due to 
it's not as many people. Yeah. Like yeah. The cities are always better, aren't they? Like Liverpool's bouncing for music. Mm. And yeah, Manchester's exactly. bouncing for music. What would you rather attach yourself to? Like what scene, Liverpool or the Manchester scene? Um I don't I don't know. I don't I'm not sure of the who's who would you say are the big Liverpool bands at the minute? Probably Jamie Webb's is probably yeah. like Yeah, yeah Jamie's much. class. I like Red Rum Club. Yeah, yeah they're doing, the money, they're yeah. doing great. Um yeah, and then there's also like the people that kind of attach them, like Brooke yeah. Home and people yeah. like that. Like, yeah, I, I think she's brilliant. Her voice is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then Manchester, it, it, they're quite similar, aren't they? I know there's the like the rivalry of mm. Liverpool and Manchester, but I think deep down they kind of get on. Yeah, yeah I know it, on, it's yeah. like a, it's like a joke rivalry in it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't know who I'd rather attach myself to. I'd be t- I'd take either. If he yeah. either wants to have me and yeah. wants to adopt me, I'll take it. Well, I'll just say, um, your top three favourite songs, right, we're going to do two this time. Because we usually do by Liverpool artists, yeah. but we'll do Welsh artists first. Welsh. All right, okay. Oh, right, let's have a think. It's probably the phonics. I love the phonics. I think Maybe Tomorrow is a beautiful song. Yeah, it is. Yeah, top a song. really though. good song. Um, i trying to think who else is... So you've got like Shirley, like Shirley Bassey. So there's, I really like the song Jezahel by Shirley Bassey. Like if you listen to it, you would not, or if you like knew me, you wouldn't think I'd like that song or anything. I think that's an absolutely top tune. And then I'll go for, cause Catfish was so big. Like, yeah. Are well, they all Welsh? Catfish? Yeah. No, one of the, uh, one of them's Geordie, I think. Yeah. I think the guitarist was Geordie. Um, and Van McCann, I don't, I think he's English, but they moved, yeah. he moved to Wales. Um, but they count. The people say they're a Welsh band. Yeah, I'd have to go for one of theirs because when I was like fourteen, fifteen, like they were the the band that yeah, like yeah. everyone was listening to. Um, I think no Seven Tom Jones. Uh, no, it's, I, I like. It's not. It's not anything <laughs> against Tom Jones. It's, yeah. just, it's just not. I think I'd probably go for seven by Catfish in the bottom end. Yeah, so they're, good they're my three off the top of my head. Yeah. I think. And then your three top favorite students from Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah. Okay. In my life. Yeah. Um, can I just pick three Beatles songs? If you want to, you could. Yeah. I probably would. You know. Yeah. I, maybe I'd pick a John Lennon one as well. So in my life, definitely that's my favorite Beatles song. I think it's maybe the best song of all yeah, time. It's fantastic. Yes. Yeah, it? As the all are, to be honest. Huh. All of them are fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's difficult picking between them. I'm yeah. trying to think who else there is. Like I'll, I'll try and go for ones that aren't quite as obvious as that. So um, let's have a think. I've gone blank now. Give me some Liverpool bands. Or the Lars. Cast. Oh, the Lars. Huh? Echo and Cast. the Bunnyman. Echo and the Bunnyman. No, um, what's the? Is it Nothing Lasts Forever by Echo and the Bunnyman? Tune. Yeah, I like that one. Me ma loves that song. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, it's sad, but it's also like... Yeah, it's yeah, a great like, song. Um, and then, let's have another one. Okay, I'll have to go for a Macca one. I yeah. feel like I'd be leaving him out if I didn't. So I'll go for... Um, what should I go for? Uh, let Me Roll It. Sure. I'd go for Band on the Run, personally. They're both. For so uh, wings wings get a bad rap, but yeah. wings would he's just you can't, you can't like compete with what he's done before. No, so was there always going to be just like that? every every Paul McCartney album has got at least one or two songs where you go, "There's the magic." There is that yeah that the best songwriter that's been in the past hundred years. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, the best yeah. songwriter that's <laughs> been in the past hundred years. There he is again. Like there's there's one on the last album. Do you know the McCartney Three? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Deep, deep feeling. It's it's such a good song. It's very psychedelic and sounds really modern and just great. Do when he does interviews, he disappoints me a bit though, because he he's got he, like he three anecdotes. Be a, he could on be it. a lot more. It's funny just though. Cool, could not he? But he's got like, but he's so he's a persona, isn't he? Now, like, it must be. It's like a really deep chat to have, but it must be so difficult being him because he's got to always yeah. be on. Like, if he's ever out, he's got to always be on and can't have a bad day because then people are like well Paul McCartney's a bit of a dick but yeah yeah he's got like a few anecdotes on you that he rehearses and you see them on the same on the chat shows yeah. just telling them slightly differently yeah but, I'm course that I'm not going Glastonbury next week you know uh, me too it, me too heavy it's Noel Gallagher and then Paul McCartney on the main stage what unbelievable I know imagine if you got him out with him I doubt it like but I reckon he will you know do you reckon do you not reckon yeah, it'd be Ringo if it's going to be anyone oh don't say that it makes me want to go even more 
mate, our, our mate Mason said to him yesterday, he, said, he reckons that Paul McCartney will get Noel Gallagher out for all you need us love. Because he usually plays that as gigs, mm. don't he, um, Noel Gallagher? Isn't that a Lennon tune, though? That's a Lennon tune, isn't it? All you need is love, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, you know. Yeah, I think it is. I don't know. I don't think. Ooh. I think There'll be someone Lennon. commenting. I think that's like, a Lennon tune. I know, yeah. I hope Let us know in the comments. I hope I'm not got that wrong, but yeah, I think that's a Lennon tune. I, that would be great, but yeah. I don't. I someone else said that to me. I just don't get why. Yeah. Why would Why would he? He's Paul McCartney. He doesn't need Noel Gallagher. Yeah, true. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, love, yeah. I love them both, but they don't need each other. Like, no, they're their own artists. What do you reckon you'll be doing now if you win and have a ways? Oh, I'd be. I'd still be fat. I'd definitely still be fat because when I joined Have a Word, I was like twice the size I am now. Yeah. Was you? Were you? Yeah. The people like there's. I get the odd tweet of people going, "I've just watched like one of your first episodes." Jesus Christ! I want your diet. I'm gonna have yeah. to go back and watch yeah. this. I've never noticed that. I know. I know. People. I. <laughs> what? What rounds? But what episode did you join? I joined on the Stephen tries the second one. Um, but yeah, if you go back and look, I was. A hefty guy. I can't even imagine what you're... No. I'll show you as a picture of it when, when we finish. Um, I was a hefty guy, um, so I'd probably still be fat. To be fair, <laughs> since we've started this, I've just increasingly got larger. I've like, <laughs> got larger. But mine was literally, like, it was partly, like, um, just... But veggies helped me lose weight because I used yeah. to fucking love meat and, like, yeah. I'd, I'd eat loads. And now I just cut out, so I'm not at first. And then... Um, just lots of lots of things kind of worked out, but being on camera twice a week and kind of being a bit vain and being like you don't look good, so that that kind of made me want to lose weight a little bit as well. I know yeah. what you mean. Could you see yourself more? Yeah, it's yeah. just everyone, everyone's self-critical, aren't they? And you kind of no one else would say anything to me, but yeah, if you look in the mirror and you're not fully happy, you can change it. Like yeah, I don't know. That was a weird point. You just sit stands in front of the mirror all day, you lads. Oh, you're a bit of a poser, are you? No, oh, he, is, he, he has, is. has, has you love your thing. Instagram? No, I don't even upload that oh, much, me. I'm posing. I've I'm not a poser. What am I oh, supposed yeah. to do on a photo? Editor's photos. No, I don't. Do you? No, I don't. Do you whiten your teeth? No, I don't. Wait, He's chatting shit. Ignore him. <laughs> the people know. <laughs> the people know. <laughs> what terrible. Just, what would you say the best <laughs> album of all time is? Um, ooh, I can give you a few because I don't want to give just one. Rumours. There's got to be up there yeah. in any discussion. And then you could name five or six Beatles ones. My favourite is probably Abbey Road, I think. I think just for the, like, the... I know there's some tunes on there that aren't the best, but yeah, I love a lot of it. Um, a clock before, do you have that tattoos on? You know, I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah cool. That's my only tattoo. That was mid-breakdown, that. I'd, so I always said I was never going to have a tattoo. And then I was... I was I was having some like a my personal life had gone to absolute shit about eighteen months ago and my mates were like yeah we'll go and get a tattoo they were like <laughs> conned me into it <laughs> yeah. it's my only tattoo I don't know if I'll get any more um, he's then, got a cool tattoo now as well, well have you got a Beatles show on? no I've got a stone nose as well on my leg there nice nice it, it ain't though the fellow was laughing at me crying he said, you? He said no we ain't crying <laughs> he said he said um, he's doing the writing on it. And he's like, what's, what's the pain on a scale of one to ten there? And I think I said a six or a seven. And he's just like, that's not a six or a seven, that lad. It's about <laughs> a two. <laughs> I, I wasn't, it wasn't that bad for me. I, I wasn't, I don't think it was that bad. I don't know. I don't think I'd ever get one. I always have this thing in my head that I wouldn't like something my whole life. So I couldn't get I one. I thought that, but then now I look at it, I'm kind of, I don't think I'll ever go off the Beatles. Yeah. I'm, I'm not... I always said I wasn't going to get one, but if it's going to be anything, that's fine. That, that'll that do for it. It's fine. Yeah. When I got mine, I, I was saying to my girlfriend as we walked out afterwards, I said, so I watched there be a big scandal come out about the Stone Roses next week. Well, well, Ian Brown's not yeah. the cleanest <laughs> man at the minute, is he, in terms of his reputation? <laughs> yeah. That'll be a good um, podcast, Ian Brown, wouldn't it? Just talk just about the vaccine and he'll just go off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love Ian Brown. I like a lot of his solo stuff. I'm going to see him when he comes to Liverpool. Yeah, October. I'm going to see him when he's on. I never got to see the Stone Roses, so. No, me either. Me either. He's definitely not going to turn up or something. His head will just go. Or well, he, I've, I've seen some videos of him live and it's a bit questionable, like in terms <laughs> of his vocals nowadays. Yeah. But 
Have you seen the one of them fighting on stage like early 2000s? No. Some fella like jumps on stage and goes to like hug him. Like the whole band just start passing him. <laughs> it's like his own band now. I'll have to get it up. It was in some like Stone Roses group or something. I, I seen it like fucking hell. Like, like nutty. Oh, you ever seen the Liam and Noel one where someone tries to attack? Was it someone tries to someone attack, attack Noel? Noel. Yeah, they, and Liam they broke his ribs. Him. Mad though. Yeah, it was in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was bad that one. Yeah, but it's funny because it looks like Liam goes to attack him and then, but he's kind of like not. It's like <laughs> yeah. get, waiting for someone to hold him back. To him, like, ah! like that. Yeah, I would. That would be my worst nightmare: is getting attacked on stage. Oh, to think of the clicks and views and the interactions though. Yeah, I've nearly had a fight once on when I've been just doing a covers gig. Oh yeah, what? yeah. Some guys threatened to shove my guitar at my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. What song? <laughs> Why? I don't think it. I think I'd said something to him. Like I was just joking, like in between songs, like bantering or something. Yeah. And then he was just like, ah, he was pissed. He was like, I'll shove that fucking guitar up your ass. And I took it off. I went, come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> the bar staff had to like separate us. <laughs> <laughs> Still got paid. It's all good. It's all Funny good. Yeah. Uh, just, it's going back to tattoos, right? Do you know what the live shows that I've heard? Yeah. Um, what would it take for you to get a tattoo done? If I, if I was to put them in charge of it? Yeah. Oh, God. I don't know because they'd stitch me up. They'd really stitch me up. Like Dan's one's funny. Like the one he got on his ass. Like what it, did he get done? He got R.I.P. Runty. Do you know? Do you, do you remember the episode? He he um he was working on a farm and he was. I'll tell a brief. Oh, <laughs> tell yeah. oh yeah. He was working on a farm. And he was like fifteen or sixteen, and he accidentally killed a piglet. <sighs> Like he was trying to put it out of its misery, but he accidentally like made it yeah. suffer more. Um, so he got R.I.P. Runty on on his ass. Um, <laughs> what? I don't. I don't know. I don't think I'd trust them. I don't think I could do it. Yeah. No. Are you looking forward to the the, um, the live show at the Echo? Y- yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? It's like, madness. It's it's something that people don't get to do. Yeah. Like, just it's. it's do you think you could do bigger than that again? Do you think we? Adam, Adam's got it in his head that we're going to do Anfield one day. And I, I yeah. love the ambition. I absolutely admire it. Like, yeah. I would, I'm not going to say no. Like, yeah. I would love to do that, but we're going to need to grow some more before that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the arena's, the arena's a mad one. I've I've only been to the arena once. I went to watch Richard Ashcroft there last year. We seen yeah, you there. So did uh, you? I was... No, I, 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 oh, this, is emba- this is embarrassing. We were, in the, we were in the queue for the bar. Oh, I've we? a few too many. <laughs> and I was like, that's been weird. And he's like, go on, lad, say something. And yeah. I must have been... So, I was proper hammered. I made Someone did sh- say something to me in the queue. Was it you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, was it? All right, yeah. okay. Yeah, but I remember that. I made a show of me. Because that was the first time I was out with my mate and he saw me get recognised. He was like, this is so weird. <laughs> I remember being I remember being there and I said to him like I was just chat he's my best mate and I just said to him my dream like imagine one day you get to play here and then the next yeah. time I go there I'm going to be play like I'll be on the stage. Do you think you'll do your song? I don't know. They've not asked me as of yet. Yeah. Um we're still in the planning stages. I think it'd be great. Like I don't obviously don't want to take the limelight or anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not I'm not if they don't want me to do it that's completely fine like I'm just happy to be on the stage. Do you think the don't people will want you to do it though? I don't. Or know. at least Laura's gone. I think I I think it'd be nice to have a like sing along at the end, like yeah. or even just in the middle. Like they, I know some of the plans we've got. Yes, yeah. it's, it's mental. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a special moment in terms of like, I think podcasting in this country is gonna. It might be if if podcasting keeps going the way it is, it's still on the up, isn't it? It's like yeah. a, it's a relatively new thing. This could be like a defining moment in kind of UK podcasting yeah. terms because it's not many people are playing arenas. I know um, Chris Ramsey and Chris and Rosie Ramsey are playing arenas with, the, with their podcast, but this kind of feels a bit more um, underground and like a bit yeah. like yeah. cult like. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's kind of when I when I seen it announced, I was like, "Fucking hell, that's bo- that, that's boss." Yeah, we were sitting I mean? on that for a couple of months, and it was so difficult. I, I was just telling everyone. They were like, yeah. "Don't tell anyone." And I was like on the phone, like, "Guess yeah. what we're doing?" Like, just telling. It's hard to like organize a- though. Like, do you have a guarantee you're going to sell a certain amount of tickets to be in order to then? I don't give them really get involved with the business side of it. I won't lie. Yeah. But, um. I think, I think it'll be. I know that we've we've sold enough already for it. It's it will go ahead. Like it's not one of them that. Yeah. It's not like you see them tours where people have like sold twenty tickets and they have to cancel it. Yeah. It, yeah. We've 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 sold a, a good chunk. There's still a few seats left. I know the floor's sold out, which is crazy. Yeah. Um. 
yeah, I've got I've got a lot of family coming, family and friends coming to that, and it's just going to be a big piss up afterwards. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a real pinch me moment. Yeah. It'll be like an after party somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Th- it's booked. It's booked. I don't remember where it is, which is good because I tell people. <laughs> so I don't remember. But yeah, there'll be family and friends and podcast guests and stuff like that. It's going to be a real like a real a moment for us for us all. Obviously, the lads are Adam and Dan. Are, they couldn't have imagined this when it started. Yeah. And then when I joined, it was relatively small. It was like. I think we were on like a thousand patrons and stuff like that. It wasn't. I wish we had a thousand patrons. Oh, yeah. I'd say 50 less. But in the grand scheme of things, like that's relatively small yeah. compared to like now and that. It's what is it now? Like 15k, 14k? Yeah, yeah, like 14 and a half, Mad. I think. Yeah. So I think we've not we've not had a big celebration for a while in terms of the. We did a big one at 10k. I think we did a lock in. I can't really remember. It all just blurs into one. I yeah. don't know if you guys are the same. After we record a podcast, we'll be like, what did we talk about then? So yeah, I, I'm, I'm the... It feels like a proper trance. Um, so yeah, I think 15K will we'll, we'll do something. Yeah. Again. By the time you get to... When's the echo? Was it November or December? December. December yeah. the 9th. Yeah. By the time it's done, it'll probably be... You'd imagine it'll be near 20, won't you? I, yeah, I hope definitely. so. Yeah, you'd yeah, hope so. Tried. I hope so. Mad. Are you guys coming? We haven't got tickets yet, but we're going to yeah. have to go out. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, I'd sort you out, but I've already sorted enough people. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I've not even told Adam and Dan yet. I've already invited like eight people. Like, I'm very like yeah, you can get guest list. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. but it's it's mad, isn't it? Am I right in saying you played guitar at the end of the oh, what's it called? Behind the echo. I had oh, the song blind st- date! I yeah, had yeah. it stuck on my head for weeks. What's Islands blind? in the street. Oh yeah, yeah. That was that was a weird. That was a weird night. That was a weird weird night. Um, how did you find the blind date? Because it was so I couldn't hear anything on the stage. That was a, yeah. that was a slight issue. So they were answering the questions. I could just couldn't hear what they were saying. So I just yeah. guessed in the end of who to pick. Like everyone was lovely there. All yeah. the girls were really nice. Um, and then it was. It was they, 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 I think they said to me like, "We don't know how to finish the show. Do you just want to do a song again? Like, do you want to just do a love song? Like, so it was between um, Islands in the Stream. And what was the other one? We had two choices. It was two like cheesy love songs. Yeah. yeah. We were going to do one of them too. I went for Islands in the Stream in the end. It was just, yeah, it's, I get to do so many weird things that if you'd have told me three years ago, I'd be doing this sort of stuff. I'd <laughs> be like, what? I'm bantering on stage with Sean Walsh and then I'm going to go and play Islands in the Stream. Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, it's, it's weird doing that sort of stuff, but it's great. I'm kind of trying to take it in my stride and not to, not think about it too much and just like do it and like live it. Yeah. Do you know if your 15 year old self would he be buzzing with where you are now? I think 15 year old me would be like, you should have been famous by now. I was a cocky <laughs> little shit. Like, I was annoying. <laughs> yeah, I was annoying. You're, you're not doing bad on Instagram, no? What's yeah, yeah. No, socials are like... Yeah, socials are, socials are good. It's, it's... I tried not to go on social media as much as... It's not, it's not the best view, is it, if you're on it all day, every day. So no. I do try and limit my time on it. But yeah, it's nice getting the kind of interactions with people and people telling you how much the pod means to them and Do stuff you get like, like quite a lot of that yeah we we all get we all get lots of dms kind of and there's the emails always full of people saying like i've been going through a lot of shit and yeah the podcast is a nice distraction or me and my mate have bonded over the pod that sort of thing so it's, so it's always nice to get that feedback in that because it is work at, like at the end of the day it's my job but it's nice to know that that's kind of even if it's helping someone in a small way like yeah if someone sees a clip that i've made on social media and they're like oh that's made my day it's made me laugh it's just a nice little kind of reminder that it's not like pointless work you know yeah. What I mean? yeah like we we get like the, the odd message don't we yeah. saying someone enjoys the podcast and i buzz off that for about a week yeah telling like me the the yeah, but how many ne- how many negative ones do you get there the oh, the on. no, the the one... the best it's funny on, uh, the negative comments it's so yeah, funny it's so the best, mad the best comment we've ever had my favourite and it's one of our mate, Matthew's favourite you want to know the snooker player John Parry yeah someone said on a photo of me said there's John Parry to lads did you think about it for weeks that's my problem oh, so I, I see a well, negative I just one buzz off it, I think we I think we do it quite alright to be fair I think it's quite funny, mate. Yeah. The negative comments. Like, oh, there's no. one which when is like... Um, we don't really get personal ones, though. It's yeah. normally about, like, the we guest. Had, oh, right. We okay. had one... Don't worry, like... But yeah, <laughs> we, we, had, we had one saying, um, these two schoolboys need to do the research. Yeah. That one was, that was great. A good one. 
Yeah, no, like when Laura's Gone came out, yeah, obviously I don't get as many of the comments just because I'm not as I don't talk as much as the others. Um, but I was getting a lot of stuff, and say there was like a hundred positive comments. The one that was like, "This is shit," I'd be like, "Oh, that guy hates me," and I'm, I don't know what I've done to him. And like, yeah. that's that's the thing that's going around my head for ages. I don't focus yeah. on the positive. It's just you know, does party want to play to it? Yeah, oh, and I always think of yeah, trying to think of a smart play and then just have a way of myself. And think, there was oh, one a couple of weeks ago that was like that kid in the background needs to get his jaw sorted. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, I've no, I've never had an issue with my jaw before, but then I'm looking in the mirror like, do I? Do I need to get my jaw sorted? What's going on there? Yeah, I, f- I think it's like good. Well, do you know, with negative comments, like do you know, like Adam, he's I'd say he's very thick skinned, isn't he? When oh, it comes yeah, to yeah, negative yeah. comments, and that. back in it. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. Not yeah. Asked, none he? of the others are that. I don't think yeah. they're that bothered by the negative ones. Like, yeah. it's it's just it's part and parcel of it, isn't it? You'll get all the positive ones, but obviously, it's good for yeah. the algorithm. All yeah. the comments. Yeah. Are. yeah, I so I'm the only one. I'm the one that's in charge of the TikTok. So they don't see any of that. Yeah. I occasionally will scroll through and just laugh. Like people love an argument on TikTok, don't they? They just oh. love rowing over the smallest thing. My favorite one is when they completely misunderstand that it's a joke and they're oh, like, yeah. actually, this is the truth. And <laughs> that, 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 those ones are the funniest ones when it's clearly like, clearly a lie and clearly yeah. a joke. They take it well too seriously. We have loads of ones about like being scouts. People saying they hate scouts. Oh yeah, we, we get a, so many of them. We it's... put a video up about him. Um, we had an um, uh, ex footballer called Lee Mullen. You one, and yeah. he was all he said was um, Pardew. Alan Pardew didn't like scouts. And everyone's commenting, does anyone like scouts? Don't blame uh, Yeah, uh, someone put, I love Pardew you now. We're just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's it's yeah. There's a lot of that in there. It's it's. I don't get it. Like I'm not from Liverpool, but. I, fucking love the city and i yeah. love the people like. i find that honestly like it's bad on social media but i can remember last year i went to tram lines festival in sheffield and that's like out the way and so i was on i was on the like you have to get like a tram into the festival right and i was on it with my girlfriend we had a few drinks so i was just laughing about it like singing up southgate eating the scouts and i was just like <laughs> yeah it's going on it's crazy all that it's it's crazy all that but you just it's good for the algorithm on TikTok. yeah keep commenting <laughs> Don't get me wrong, if someone's shouted something at me in the streets, I won't like that. Saying yeah, that. True, like, but, oh, if they watch the podcast, it'd be all right, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a views of you, innit? Yeah. <laughs> we'll take any views at this point. Oh. <laughs> what, what would you say your favourite pint is? Pint. Right, okay. This was the only one when you sent me them that I actually had to think about because I know you're probably going to judge me for this, but I don't drink beer. Like, oh, not mm. drink cider. Yeah, nah, so, you'll so, get on with him then. You, you like cider? Doesn't want beer, no. Oh yeah, you, you have stuff. Yeah. So I, I, I drink like a teenage girl. Like <laughs> I drink like my favorite drinks a steamboat. Like yeah. I love a steamboat. Like because it just tastes like pop. I can drink them. Whereas yeah. like beer, just don't like it. But in terms of pint, I love a record lick. Like the wild berries one when that's yeah. on. Draft, that's nice stuff. When that's on draft, I'm on it. That's what I'll drink. I'll have that. Um, yeah, cidery, that sort of stuff. Do you know what I've proper got into lately? Do you know lemon hooch? Lemon hooch is banging. I love it. I love having a lemon hooch at a gig. That's nice because you can just put them it's away. It's so and, easy to stomach yeah. out. Yeah. Horrible on your teeth. Though. Yeah, it's the sugar. The yeah. sugar is bad. But yeah. the next, the next that, day, you feel like a smackhead, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> your teeth's all going to fall out on that. Yeah, but... yeah the, a gig, <laughs> a lemon hooch is. Do, do you know what the only issue is? Like, do you know, like Aston and stuff like that? They mm. don't sell hooch. Tome and bag, and then where you have to go for it. Is it? I don't really like. I haven't had it since like first year of uni, man. I it's love just it. Just lemonade. Yeah, so, I, like I, I've gone into it lately. I'm just like, yeah, made that like. Yeah, that sort of stuff. Smirnoff off ice, VK, that sort of stuff. Yeah. I can have them. That's fine. It's one of them. If if if, if <laughs> in the booze, if I went for all our mates, if I went up and got one of them, yeah, I have to drink the side of them. Yeah. I stick with the cider or the spirits. That's what I'll do if I'm out with the lads. <laughs> yeah. But if I'm on my own, I'll have a hooch. I'm not asked. Well, if you if you were out getting around mm. and it's you, Adam, yeah. Steve, and Carl, yeah, what would you all get? Just Dan, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was. Carl, Carl likes a rum, rum and rum and coke. I I'm think. a fan of rum and coke. Yeah, Kraken. I think that'd be yeah, Carl, that would be Carl's. Um, Adam loves a Guinness at the minute. He's quite he's quite faddy, Adam. So he'll like different things. So I'd either get him a Guinness or Madry if they've got Madry on draft. 
Yeah. He likes his I've, I've recently tried a pint of Madry for the first time. Good? Yeah, it's class. I don't like it. No, I haven't tried it. <laughs> no. And it's you called me a pint, didn't you? I and did, it, yeah. Nice pint, pint wasn't it? Um, Stee. Stee likes his spirits as well. Probably get get Stee a tequila. Um, tequila and lemonade or so, tequila and soda. And then Dan, what would Dan have? Dan's got to have a turbo shandy. That's just... That's What's a turbo shandy? What's that? Isn't it? It's... Uh, like half a pint, and then you mix it instead of with lemonade. You do it with like Smirnoff ice. Interesting. I think that'd be nice. That yeah, means, you know, I'm gonna have to try one Double of them. the booze as well, innit? Yeah, double the booze. <laughs> That's funny. That like, you love that, you. Yeah, well, <laughs> getting do them all the time. Shandy. I'll be trying one of them next time. Mouth, <laughs> definitely. Do it. So we got any yeah. more questions before we finish up? Um, not that I can think of. I'll have a quick look on my notes. Dead quick, very. Oh, I have. I've got one. Go on. If everyone I have a wave is gonna have a big brawl, who would come out on top? And fight. Right. So, I'm going to say that I'd like to back myself. <laughs> I'm the tallest. And I don't know. I don't know, because I feel like Stee is like a dark horse. I've never seen him <laughs> fight, like, but he feel, I feel like he'd be nippy. Like he'd be like, <laughs> like kick you in the leg or something. <laughs> um, I'm just going to back myself. I reckon I'm going to win. Yeah. I reckon, yeah. We like the confidence. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to. I've got to do it. Didn't Adam have a boxing match a few years ago, though? Yeah. I think he lost, didn't he? <laughs> oh, did, did, <laughs> yeah. didn't he fight Elliot Steele? I think. I, I didn't I think that was right. He fought Elliot Steele, who's been on. I think he lost. I don't nah. know. I'm I'd, lucky, be, I'd, be, I'd beat Adam. He'd think he'd beat me, which is great. But, but I, I, do you reckon I, you'd ever do that as a live show? Have a word, boxing. boxing. Yeah. I don't know. I think they'd probably put me with Carl. We're probably like, we're similar like sizes and that. Yeah. I don't know. I'd be up for that. Like I've that never. Might be an idea. Though. I've I've never had a fight. Like I've always there's that part of me that's like I'd want to get in a fight to know how I'd just to see what it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just that. But if it was organised, then it's sound. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. See, I always reckon like you know, me and you organised the boxing match with me and you. I reckon we'd fall out over that me and you. Yeah. Know? yeah. So ah, you know about the points <laughs> decision, on not I won. I won. <laughs> yeah, I, I would do that. I'd no, be up for that. Be funny, though. Yeah. <laughs> Defo. What, what's one song you wish you'd written? If you could pick any of all time. Um, I'm trying to th- I'm trying to think. Let's have a think of ones that kind of... So in my life, I mentioned before, yeah. that's kind of a given. And then... Um, there's a song by the War on Drugs. Do you know the War on Drugs? Yeah, I've heard a few people mention them. Like yeah, the, never listened to them. Uh, like a the American kind of, it's a bit Springsteen-y, a bit like Americana kind of yeah. style. There's a song of theirs called Thinking of a Place that's like it's like 11 minutes long, and it's I could listen to it all day every day. It's it's such a beautiful song, and it's like a a full on like it's like three different songs in one. So I'd go for that one, Thinking of a Place. And what's one random fact or hidden talent which you love? Uh, I can make a, a good fart in town with my hands. Go on then. <laughs> <laughs> That's talent. good, that you know. Talent, yeah. <laughs> That'll probably get you through the first round of Britain's Got Talent, though. Yeah. <laughs> Simon would be impressed, I yeah. reckon. Give you the golden buzzer. <laughs> yeah. That was that was fun in high school. That was that was like the peak of entertainment in high school, just being under the table, just pretending like the supply teacher had fired, just being like... <laughs> 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 it's funny that you know. Yeah. Do you have any hidden talents? Nah, you know. I don't, you know. I'm um, shit said after for me, you know. I'm left handed, left but I've got I don't another thing in my hands. It tends to be my hands. I could do this. Oh, oh that's horrible, that. That's gonna sound horrible on Spotify for the audio yeah. listeners, though. I don't even care. You're welcome. <laughs> someone's, gonna, someone's gonna be on the way to work listening to that. Ah, <laughs> uh, seven in the morning. Yeah, that was, that was, don't know, I don't know when I learned to do that, but that's, they're my, they're my tricks, there you go, there's my party tricks. <laughs> oh, hold on, I'm just throwing random questions yeah. out of the airport. Can you speak any Turkish? Like, so little, like, um, I can literally be like, hi, how are you, I'm good, how are you, that's about it, and I can like barter and order a pint or yeah. order, yeah. order like a meal and stuff, but yeah, it's, it's something I've always wanted to do, I speak a lot more Welsh than I do Turkish. See, my dad's Welsh, but he's from South Wales. Yeah. And he doesn't know where the Welsh. No, he doesn't mean Anna Grandad either. I, I don't speak fluently, like, mm-hmm. but if you go 10, 10 minutes from my house in a car, yeah. 
it's all farmers that just speak Welsh and if you speak in English they're not happy that sort of thing that's that's mad. Mad. yeah it's it's um it's weird the kind of divide in Wales in terms yeah. of the people that speak Welsh and don't it is it is kind all of the writing looks mad in Welsh as well doesn't it I reckon I'm used to it now like yeah. that, that really long place name like everyone just learns that in school like it's just a rite of passage like yeah. you just have to do can it can you say it? yeah that was good though that's, that's very I could have made that, that you was, don't I know, actually yeah. Know. Yeah. <laughs> I only know um, slow a raff yeah isn't it yeah on it's on the road, road isn't it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. so have you got any more random questions before we finish up um, not that I can think of you know nah, just um what I'd say is for the game, people watching, watch your socials and um, where can they find your song? Uh, Twitter is Finley K, F I N N L A Y. Instagram is Finley.KK. And then Spotify is Finley K. Every, all the music kind of things is Finley K. Um, the song's out on the 1st of July. Okay. Yeah. Get on him. Yeah. yeah remember fine. to like, subscribe, and follow if you listen on Spotify. Do it. And um, remember to listen to Finn's song. Get on. Thank you. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Finley Kay, and this is my new single, I Think I Do, coming out July the 1st. Take what you want if you need it, I know it can be hard to find. Rearrange all the things that you're feeling. I want to play on your mind Not the sort of thing I go for But time will see it through Here in the moment I want it At least I know I think I do Are you still feel it in the morning Like you're running out of time Will you make it for the last train Well, I'll meet you at the end of the line you want if you need it nothing's here for too long can you feel it slipping through your fingers better grab a pocket full not the sort of thing i go for but time will see it through here in the moment i want it at least i know i think i do you still feel it in the morning like you're running out of time we make it for the last train Oh, I'll meet you at the end of the line you, ooh, oh, oh, you, ooh, oh, oh, you, ooh, oh, oh, you, oh, oh, meet you at the end of the line Trouble sleeping lately And I've been feeling things that I shouldn't feel Feel And I've been trouble sleeping lately And I've been feeling things that I shouldn't feel Feel You still feel it in the morning Time we make it for the last train, or oh, meet you at the end of the line.